The history of the Red House is as colorful as its iconic walls. Witness to Trinidad's unfolding political history for over 150 years, the building itself has been at times besieged by fires and political unrest. The seat of colonial rule, it was here that the flag of the newly independent Trinidad and Tobago unfurled for the first time in 1962. The Red House stands out as an important landmark in Trinidad's historical, social and political landscape. On February 15, 1844, Governor Sir Henry MacLeod broke ground for a new government administration building next to Woodford Square, then known as Brunswick Square. The building was designed by Richard Bridgens, the British-born superintendent of public works. It's neoclassical in style. Whenever people wanted to establish authority and send a clear message that they were in charge, they built in the style of the Greeks and the Romans, and this is all over the world. In the 1840s, although Trinidad had been a British colony for nearly 50 years, it was still very foreign in its languages, its religion, Roman Catholic predominantly. Its people were very cosmopolitan. English was a minority language. Most people spoke Creole, Patois, or French, Spanish, and so on. So I think the objective really was to project British imperial power on a colony which was very unlike Barbados, say, or Jamaica. And that's why the, the, even the first Red House was a very grand building. It projects the majesty and might of the British Empire. The monumental building was made up of a north and south block, joined by a double archway over Prince Street. Officially opened in 1848, 50 years later, however, the South Block was not complete. In 1897, the building was painted red to celebrate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. From then on, it was known as the Red House. An ordinance for the increase of water rates in 1903 led to the fiery water riots. Protesting crowds, additionally incensed by the arrest of a woman, set the ground floor of the Red House aflame. Soon the whole building was engulfed and the riot act read. 42 people were injured and 16 people died as a result of the fire. The Red House was completely gutted, with elements of the facade remaining as a haunting reminder of what had been. Rebuilt for £7,485, the Red House was opened on February 4, 1907. Outfitted with exquisite details, the most outstanding feature is the ceiling of the chambers, made of white gesso work. In the center of the rotunda is a fountain to help cool and ventilate the offices. At the stroke of midnight on August 31st, 1962, Trinidad and Tobago became an independent nation to great festivity and celebrations. The Princess Royal, acting on behalf of the Queen, government officials and dignitaries from around the world assembled at the front of the Red House for the official ceremonies. The onlooking crowds watched as the red, white and black flag was unfurled for the first time on the Red House lawn. On this day, Eric Williams was sworn into power as the first Prime Minister of the newly independent nation of Trinidad and Tobago. On April 12, 1981, much more somber ceremonies were held in the Red House for the passing of the then Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, whose sudden death shocked the nation. 
His body lay in state in the rotunda for three days to allow the public to file past his casket and pay their last respects. On Friday, July 27, 1990, at 6.05 p.m., during a session of the House of Representatives, the Parliament Chamber was invaded by armed gunmen, members of the Muslimin. Then Prime Minister Ian R. Robinson was taken hostage, as well as eight of his cabinet ministers and six other members of Parliament. During the attack on the Red House, seven people were killed, including the Member of Parliament for Diego Martin Central, Leo Devines, who was shot and later died in hospital. Abu Bakr surrendered on August 1st and was taken into custody. Craftsman Anthony Blackman recalls fixing the Parliament chamber after the coup. It, it, it had a scent. People remember people had died, so you would get a scent not through any chamber alone, throughout the whole Red House. I started doing the plaster Paris work like to make back up the, 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 the columns because bullet hole, remember that shoot up all the, yeah, so we started all like the ceiling, the different roses that was destroyed. After restoration, Parliament reconvened once more in the chamber a year later on July 26th, 1991. Remodeling of the Red House continues today. A modern meeting place is being built, as well as a larger parliamentary library and additional parking. However, the recent unearthing of artifacts and human bones dating back over 1,000 years on the grounds of the Red House has added even more importance to the site as the center of governance in Trinidad and Tobago.